guys, this is Christy Falk from Create with Christy. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S. Well, it's time to stamp with me again. Are you ready? Today I'm making another Stampin' Up! Ornate Garden Suite card, but it's a wedding card this time. If you've seen any of my other videos that I did earlier, they were both thank you cards. This one I'm adding a different stamp set with it to make it a wedding card, and I love the soft colors on this one. And I'm doing some heat embossing and some water coloring. It's a lot of fun. And this could be a great anniversary card, not just a wedding card. But this beautiful suite of products that I'm showcasing is in the upcoming Stampin' Up! Annual Catalog starting June 3rd, 2020. The good news is Stampin' Up! is letting us buy these products early. They're all available right now, and you can purchase them by clicking on my online store link below in the video description, or by going to createwithchristy.com and clicking Shop Now. I've made a few other cards with this suite, and I've got the links to those videos below in the video description as well. Would you like to see more sneak peek products from the upcoming Stampin' Up! Annual Catalog? Well, I've got something for you I know you're going to love. As a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I get to purchase a selection of stuff early, a month early. And I got these last week, and I really love being a demo. I love getting stuff early. And my first video is an unboxing video where I look at all of my new goodies for the first time with everyone that watched live. But you can still watch the recording. It's still a lot of fun to watch that. And I show you everything up close, all the paper papers, the designs, you see everything, things that you really can't see when you see it in the catalog. And if you are interested in that, make sure you click the link above, or I've got a, a link to it below in my description. It was so much fun opening up all that stuff and getting all the comments like I got. And another video you might be interested in is one I did last Friday. It was a live here on YouTube, and I made three cards using one card sketch, but all three cards feature the new goodies that I got. I didn't use all of them, but I used quite a few. So if you're interested in seeing those, make sure you click the link above or the one that's in the video description below. In today's card, I'm going to do some heat embossing again, but I won't be using metallic embossing powder this time, as you can see. I'm using, I wanted a subtle look, so I'm using white emboss powder and I'm watercoloring it. And this is all done on watercolor paper because I'm going to use some aqua painters. So you don't want to use uh, Whisper White or anything like that with aqua painters because it tends to... Um, make the cardstock pucker. It's not made for water, but the watercolor paper works wonderfully with this. And I love the vanilla with it. It's not quite Whisper White. Whisper White's almost too bright, so I went with the vanilla, and I like the two different shades with that. I thought it turned out pretty good. So are you ready to get started? Let's go. Okay, so you can stamp with me. When I make the card, I'm going to show you all the supplies you need first, and then you can pause the video as soon as I list everything, and go get them, and come back, start the video, and you can stamp with me. And you can always substitute different stamps that you have on hand if you don't have what I'm showing you. But if you'd like them, you can click at my, uh, my on-store link below or, like I said, shop now at www.createwithchristy.com. So what I'm going to be using is the Ornate Style Stamp Set with the Ornate Borders dies. Now these are not bundled together. This one is done with the frame set. If you saw any of my other videos, you've seen me use that. This one actually is board, uh, bundled with the thank you set. But I want to show you how these really look pretty together too. So these are both in the Ornate Garden Suite. I'm also using the Ornate Floral 3D embossing folder that's in the Ornate Garden. Gorgeous, gorgeous embossing folder. I love this and you're going to see how pretty it looks on the cardstock here in a minute. You also need to the Itty Bitty Greetings or any other stamp set that you've got that'll work. And I'm using the uh, Forever and Always, which is right here. But this is a cling stamp set, and this is uh, in the annual catalog, and it will be in the new catalog as well. You also need the rectangle, stitch rectangle dies. Oops, see if I can get a hold of them here. Here we go. Love these dies. And you need the number six die out of the main grouping here since there are three, uh, actually two groupings and one extra one. But I'm using the number six, and I always figure that number one's the smallest. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the die we're going to need out of this set. Oh, and I should have gotten the dies out that we're using on the border set. I'm using this one right here. Oops, sorry, not this one. This pretty rose one and this little border one that goes along with it. And I'll show you how those work here in a second. Those are all the dies I'm using from that. Okay, you also need ink, pa uh, ink pads. You need crumb cake, mint macaron, rococo rose, seaside spray, so saffron, and you're also gonna need the Versamark pad. So those are all the ink pads you need. You also need 
white emboss powder, and it comes in a little container, but I've poured mine, a little bottle, but I put mine in a little, uh, not Tupperware, but it's a little cheap, uh, great value, Walmart brand, to keep my uh, embossing powder in. It just makes it a lot easier for me. This is optional. I'm using Embossing Buddy. We don't have this anymore. It retired and then sold out. So you can uh, do uh, embossing without it, but if you do have it, go ahead and grab it because it does come in handy. You're going to need your heat tool, of course, since we're embossing, and a problem, maybe a brush. You may not need this. This is just in case you get embossing powder where you don't want it. You also need the uh, Basic Pearl um, rhinestones, and these are in the current annual catalog, and you can get them um, in the new catalog when it comes out, too. Everything I'm using today is still available, just to let you know. And make sure, too, if you do place an order, use that host code you see in the bottom left corner. You can earn a $50 shopping spree on me. And just uh, check the doily rewards link below. Click on that, and you'll find out how you can get that $50 rewards from me. I think that is it. Oh, you do need some multi-purpose glue. almost forgot the adhesive. You do need an aqua painter. These are retiring. And it seems like they're sold out. But don't worry, when the new catalog starts June 3rd, we are going to have a thing called water painters, and I'm kind of excited about these. With the aqua painters, we had two tips. These are going to be three in a pack for only $12, so it's the same. It's actually $5 cheaper than the aqua painters, and you get a fine tip, a medium tip, and a large flat tip. I'm excited to get those, but this works too if you've got that. Uh, you take your pick tools. just helps when you're going to uh, take the pearls off. You'll need some snail, and I think... I think that's all we're gonna oh and dimensionals you are gonna need some dimensionals you can use the black too but I suggest using the white if you've got those okay oh now we're gonna get going with the cardstock you need a piece of thick very vanilla that's eight and a half by five and a half you need two four by five and a quarter inches of the regular very vanilla you need two of these you need a five and a quarter by one and a quarter inch piece of the very vanilla. And you need a two and a quarter by one inch piece. And you need a piece of uh, the Fluid 100 watercolor paper. Uh, it's three and a quarter by four and three quarter inches. Okay, that's everything you're gonna need. So go ahead and pause the video and uh, get all your supplies together and come back and we'll stamp together. See you in a couple minutes. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is grab the Thick Fairy Vanilla, and I do suggest scoring this ahead of time. The um, paper is extra thick. You can fold it without doing it, but the uh, with this being extra thick, it tends to um, kind of gather, wrinkle, that's what I want to say. It kind of wrinkles together. It doesn't fold quite as well. It works a lot better if you score it. So if you've got our... Uh, paper trimmer. You want to use the light blade, or if you have our Simply Scoring tool, you can do it on there too. You want to score it four and a quarter. That's the halfway point. And that's going to make it a lot easier for us to fold in half. So go ahead and do this. Grab my bone folder here. Oops, I got it covered up. There we go. Oops, help if I use the right side. There we go. <laughs> So we've got that ready to go. And take one of your four inch by five and a quarter inch pieces and you want to grab your ornate floral embossing folder. You're going to stick it in here. It doesn't matter if it's not totally straight because the flowers do are a random design so it's okay if it goes in crooked. You run this through your die cutting machine and then you're going to come out with this. Isn't that pretty? I hope you can see that in the video. I love this folder. So you need that. So that's ready to go. Okay, now you want to take your five and a quarter by one and a quarter inch piece of very vanilla, and you're going to grab your rose border here, and you're going to go and die cut this. So I'm going to go do that quick, and you can too, and then come back, and I'll be with you in just a minute. Okay, I'm back die cutting, and this is what you're going to come up with. And you notice that there's just a straight edge here. This works perfect if you want to attach it underneath a piece of cardstock and have a nice border but that's not what I was going for I'm not I'm wanting to put it directly on the cardstock but I don't want this straight line here I want it this side to look like this one so Stampin' Up! made this wonderful die to go along with this and you line it up 
above your image. You want to make sure that you get it all the way down to where all you see is the opening. You don't want to see any of this cardstock on the top, on the bottom part of this die. I hope that makes sense. So you're lining it up because this is going to give you a perfect border that matches up with this bottom border. So you actually want to put it in your die cut either straight up and down or a little bit at an angle. Make sure you line because it cuts a lot better that way. Line it up like so and run it through your die cutting machine and you are going to come out with this. So if you want to go do that real quick, go ahead, pause the video and then we'll get started again with this. Okay, now that we've got that all die cut, I'm going to grab my silicone mat. This is optional. You don't have to have this. I'm going to turn this over. You can kind of tell, if you've got it in your hand, you'll be able to tell which side is the better side. So this side is the, the back. I'm going to take my snail, and I'm going to just put it on here. I know that we're going to see a little bit of the glue in the corners, and it might be a little sticky, but I'm going to show you a little trick I learned. But this is just going to make it stick a little better on here. And it makes it easier, too, than trying to get glue in all those little bitty sp spaces. So I'm put this on, push it down, and now, yes, there's some sticky spots. Now, what, And you, you might even be able to see that they're a little shiny, too, where you can see it. I'm going to take my embossing buddy, kind of pounce on it a little bit, and that's going to, the stuff that's inside here is going to go on top of that glue, and it's not sticky at, anymore at all, and it even takes away the little shine that you saw. So that is all ready to go. Nice, easy peasy. So now we're going to go ahead and put this on our card base because it's an embossed layer. Now with this, the snail works okay because this is kind of thin, so it's going to stay on with no problem. But with the bigger pieces, I think it's better with its, when it's embossed to use your multi-purpose glue. I'm just going to put this all the way around. I always go around and then go zigzag on the center part. I want to make sure that that flower's on the left side. Of course, you can always flip it if you'd rather have it on the right. Hold it down. And now our beautiful card base is done. Isn't that gorgeous? Love that. Okay, I'm going to close this up so it doesn't get messed up. Now we're going to do some heat embossing and watercoloring. So you take a piece of, um, this is the uh, three and a quarter by four and three quarter inch piece of watercolor paper. And I am going to bring a mat in. Now our uh, stamp and pierce mat that I normally use is has retired and sold out already. So a demonstrator friend of mine named Teresa found out, she thought, I'm going to try this and it works great because I've used it a few times now. This is the foam pad that comes with your Stamparatus. So if you have a Stamparatus, you've already got this. Um, if you don't have the Stamparatus, I do suggest using that. I've done a few videos using it. It's a lot of fun to use. But you can also purchase these separately. So I, I can't remember. It's like three. It's, I know it's under $5 to get this pad. So you, this pad works just as good as the Stampin' Pierce mat did. But I want this because I want some support with this watercolor paper. There is a grain to it. So that also helps having this pad here. It just gives the stamp the support that you need. So if this part is optional. I'm using my embossing buddy again. What this does, it takes away any static or moisture that is on the paper, just like it did with our adhesive here. I'm going to bring in the big floral image from the Ornate Style stamp set. And then ink it up. Make sure I'm in the video here. Ink it up with the Versamark. And then just put it in close to center. It doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to be die cutting this in a minute. And I hold it down probably longer than I do with cardstock because that watercolor paper, you want to make sure it soaks in really good. Now you're not going to be able to see that in the video, but you'll see it here in just a minute. Now I'm going to bring in the white emboss powder, so get this out of the way. Now you'll see why I like putting them in big containers like this. I've got a spoon there. I could scoop it up too without using the spoon, but let's go ahead and use a spoon. I think this makes it so you don't make have a big mess on your work surface because it all just goes right back into this big container. Can you see that? Isn't that neat? So I'm going to flick it a little bit, make sure I don't have Emboss powder, anything? Yeah, it looks fine now. If I had had some out here on the edges, I could have used this brush to brush it off. But it looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and start heat embossing it now. But now, I just love that 
the white on white. So pretty. So now you're going to take your heat tool and you want to get this nice and hot. So let it run for a few seconds to preheat. Now I preheated, my, preheated mine a little bit right before the video. I'm going to do this at an angle. Stay in one area. Don't go all over the place because it's going to take you forever to get it to uh, melt. When it starts to get shiny, that's when you know it's done. So, so I don't know if you can see it. Hopefully you can. It is now getting shiny. And I'm just going to keep going all the way around. Here, I'll turn this off for a second. See how this looks a little darker and this looks a lot lighter? That's the shiny part. So that's the part that's all ready to embossed. So I just keep going until the whole thing is done. Now, you're, this is going to look so neat when we start coloring it in. Let's go ahead and grab our Rococo Rose first. And one thing I did forget to tell you to get is a piece of paper towel. So you might want to pause the video again and get a quick piece of paper towel. And let's grab our aqua painter. Now we want to get ink from this ink pad. The way you do this, squeeze it together while it's closed, and then you make a nice pool of ink right here in the lid. You can also use ink refills and just put um, a couple drops in your lid of the uh, Rococo Rose ink refill. But I wanted to show you how you could do it with just the ink pad. Now I'm going to start coloring this in. And I'm going to do these big flowers down here. And I'm going to kind of make the, when a, it's nice and dark, I'm using the scent, the bottom parts of the um, petals. And then when it starts lightening up, then I fill in the rest of it. Because I want to have a little darker down at the bottom of the uh, petals and lighter on the um, outside. And it's okay for this to be a little uh, wet. And it's okay if it goes on the embossing because the embossing resists the ink. So you just keep coloring this in until you're all done. So I'll uh, do both of these flowers. Okay, it looks like I've got the big flowers done, but I do want to add a little more of the dark Rococo Rose. And one thing you can do if you start to think you need more ink, just close this up and squeeze it back up again and get another pool of ink. What I'm going to do, I'm going to grab some more and I'm just going to go back and darken up a few of the places because near the end, I wasn't uh, getting the dark, darker Rococo Rose on my brush like I wanted. But I always know that I'm going to add more. But that gives it some more highlights. And this isn't like magic. I love the embossing around this. It is so gorgeous. So I've got that nice subtle effect. Now when you're done with your color, you take your paper towel and you just keep wiping it until all the ink is off. And if it ever gets too wet, sometimes it comes out too much and you can also use that to take some of the water away on your uh, brush. So let's go ahead and grab the Seaside Spray. The Rococo Rose and the Seaside Spray are ink colors that came out with the, this current catalog, so you'll have another year to use these. I love these colors. I'm so glad I got another year to use them. They're so pretty. Okay, I'm going to grab, do the exact same thing, but I'm going to do all of the little flowers with the um, Seaside Spray. So I'm kind of doing the center like this because I want that a little darker, and then I can do the rest of the petals with a lighter, and you just keep adding a little bit of ink as you go. And like I said, I am intentionally going over the embossing because I think it's kind of cool watching it resist the ink. So I'm not worrying about staying in the petals perfectly, except on the outer parts, of course. I'm talking about going between these petals. I don't care. So I'm going to keep coloring these in. Okay, now all the seaside spray ones are done. I think this is going to be one of my go-to color combos, or one of my favorites. I really like this color combo a lot. So now we're going to go with the So Saffron, and that's going to be the daisy type flowers. So once again, we're going to squeeze that ink pad, pick up some of the So Saffron. I'm going to start at the bottom to get the darker yellow. And then when it starts lightening up, then I'll go and do the rest of those petals. And you just keep doing this till you're all done. Okay, I had a little black spot there for a second, so I get my paper towel out to get that off. 
So there we've got that. Isn't that pretty? I really like that. Now you want to grab your crumb cake, and that's just going to be the flower centers of the yellow. With the blue and the Rococo Rose flowers, I thought I like the centers just being the same color. But I didn't want yellow on this center part of these. So once again, the um, ink is getting resist, resisted by the embossing. So you can still see the little white dots are in that center. So those are all ready to go. So all the flowers are done. Did get a little yellow on here, but that's okay because we're going to be die cutting this. Then I'm going to grab my mint macaron and do all the leaves. And with the leaves, oops, forgot I need to leave this open. I need to squeeze that. Missed a step. There we go. Now we got a lot of ink there. I'm going to pull this out a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to take where the veins are in the leaves. That's where I want it to be darker. And then I can go out from there to get a little softer look on the outer parts. Pick up a little more ink if you need it. And if you ever need a little more water, if your uh, brush starts to get too uh, dry, just squeeze the hand a little bit and that'll wetten that up a little bit. So I can tell mine was starting to get dry. So once again, I'm going to do the centers and then I'll lightly do the uh, outside of it. And you can always go back and make the centers a little darker if you didn't get them dark enough in the first place. So I'll finish these up. Okay, I think I'm done. Isn't that pretty? I love that embossing. So pretty. Okay, so we've got all the coloring done. And as you can see, I went ahead and did the stems too. And if you go outside the lines a little bit, no big problem because you still see that white embossing. I think it just brings, I didn't want it to just be white. I wanted to get those stems green a little bit. Now you're going to take your rectangle stitch die, center it, and it you may have, oh, actually, no, it fits perfectly. I couldn't remember. I've made so many cards here lately. So you're just going to run that through your die cutting machine and do it at an angle like this so the point goes in first. That's going to protect your die cutting machine and your die from getting warped or even breaking. So I'll be back in just a minute after this is die cut. Okay, I'm back. And when I was die cutting, I noticed I missed a little bitty spot on that leaf. The point needs colored in just a little bit. So I'll get that up here. There we go. That looks better. It was bugging me. <laughs> okay, now we've got that done. Just about done with this card. I'm going to take, um, let's see, we need to put this on with dimensionals. I'm going to turn this over. Definitely put one in each corner, like so. I'm going to make sure I've got some here on these long edges, too, because that's kind of long to have a little gap there. You can even put one here in the middle if you want to, but I think since these are here, it'll be okay. Now, when I grab my Take Your Pick tool and take off these paper backings, if you haven't seen my videos before, I'll hurry up and show you how to do this. You stick it in at an angle and pop it up and you scoop it up. This way you can get all of these on your Take Your Pick tool and you don't have these little papers all over your house. I think I got them all. Yep, I do. So now they're all here. I just take them off and pop them in my trash. And they're not going to be on my floor everywhere. Oh, wrong lid. This one goes on this one. <laughs> okay. Bring this in. And I want it over here to the side because I still want to see a lot of that uh, flower border. And I definitely, these little centers here, I want those to be showing too. And you'll know why here in just a minute. But still have a little bit of your embossed layer showing over here. Once that's pretty straight, you put it on, push it down. And while I'm while I was talking about the flowers, let's go ahead and grab the um, pearls. I used the uh, medium sized ones. Grab one, put it on your flower center. There are three roses on here, so that those are the ones we're going to put flower centers on. One right here. You could also use the small ones too. I think those would work. The big ones are a little too big, I think. I like the either the medium sized or the uh, small ones. See, that just, just a little bit of pearls and that just makes it so more special. Okay, now we're gonna put a little greeting on here. So you bring in your little, uh, your last piece of Whisper White. This is that two and a quarter by one and a quarter. 
no, two and a quarter by one, sorry. Now I'm gonna stamp this closer to the right side than the, I mean, sorry, the left side than the right side. I'm gonna grab the uh, Forever and Always and I'm gonna stamp it with my Seaside Spray. This is such a pretty blue. I really like this color. So it doesn't have to be perfectly, you don't have to worry about it being too centered because you're gonna die cut that. That's what I forgot. We need to grab, with the rectangle dies, you wanna grab this small, narrow one right here. I did forget to tell you to get that one out. And you're gonna line it here like so because we're not gonna worry about stitching this part here because that's gonna be kind of hanging over the side. So you're gonna run it through your die cutting machine and you're gonna come out with this, like this. So I'm not gonna worry about getting glue on this very end. So I'm gonna grab my snail again Put it across here and stop right before I get to the end. And then I lined up the edge of this with the edge of the embossed image. You can do it all the way to the card base, end of the card base if you want to, but I liked it better lined up with that embossed edge. Put that on and the outside of the card is done. Isn't that neat? Now we're going to decorate the inside. I know this is very vanilla, but I thought, oh, it's too special of a card not to decorate the inside. So grab your uh, four by five and a quarter inch piece. And you're just gonna stamp these a few times across the bottom. I thought that just made a nice little border at the bottom. Didn't like how this one turned out, so I did it over again, but we've got two sides of cardstock, so that's good. Now I misplaced my snail, so I'll go ahead, oh, it's right here in front of my face. We are gonna put that across here. Grab my card. And that's just going to go right on the inside. So now we've got a little decorated inside. Okay, that's today's card. I love how the card makes you look like an artist. It's just so pretty. And if you've had as much fun making this card as I did, you might want to subscribe to my channel below. You click on that little icon and then make sure you click on the bell icon after that and, and click select all. That way YouTube will notify you whenever I upload a video. If you want to see more of my creations, you can follow me on my blog at www.createwithchristy.com. And I also have a Facebook page, Pinterest page, and Instagram. And you can find links to all of them below in the video description. If you live in the United States and don't have a Stampin' Up! demo, I'd love to be yours. If you'd like a new catalog mailed to you, click on the contact me link below in the description and I'll mail one out to you right away. Don't miss out on earning a $50 shopping spree on me, too. I talked about that a little bit at the beginning of the video. You can find out more about that by clicking the Dolly Rewards link below. And if you place your order here in May, you can see the host code there in the bottom left corner of the screen. Well, it's time to go. Please support my channel by giving me a thumbs up and commenting below. I really appreciate it. See you in the next video.